What's disgusting? Union busting! What's disgusting? Union busting! What's outrageous? Poverty wages! Poverty wages! What do we want? Election dates! When do we want them? Now! What do we want? Election dates! When do we want them? Now! That's right! They gotta let us vote! We have an exo. They gotta let us vote! 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 You have given this college and our partners a divine purpose to serve this community, to serve its citizens, to provide a pathway in our economy and a pathway in careers. We know what our job is in this and we ask that you continue to focus <coughs> us in this mission, bless this board, and bless the business to be conducted. In your name, amen. As you uh, discuss the agenda today, let me remind you that it's kind of an odd space and it's hard to hear. And as a public meeting, it's important that the public present hears what the board discusses. So speak up, use your outdoor <laughs> voice, um, and don't be distracted by the very large squirrels or raccoons <laughs> wandering across the roof here. Here's, it would be three years worth of merit increases, not one year. So that was my intention. I don't think it's quite written that way because of the term this year's retention compensation payout. So it, it um, I understand what you're saying, and for me it would be I just have a couple, three things to visit with you about. The first is, uh, you'll notice these little tiny billboards on, on uh, the table. Uh, we have a new <coughs> marketing uh, approach starting this past summer. The campaign's called Make It Happen, and shortly after we received approval to move forward with our new agency, which also was our other agency, uh, PUSH, we really challenged them to look at Valencia with a different <coughs> set of eyes. Well, our tuition costs, first of all, according to the Department of Education, um, we're at $6,451, substantially below uh, what tuition costs are on average for peer institutions. Uh, so we're doing pretty darn well on that one. Um, folks are really seriously concerned about student loan debt. Our average student loan debt is a little over $8,000, and the deal that you need to be careful about is that's for borrowers. Only about 20% of our students actually take out student loans. So as far as the affordability bit, we're doing pretty darn good on that particular piece. You say many institutions, uh, this kind of conversation is driven by administrators uh, and not by faculty. It's, it speaks volumes of our faculty take leadership for improving student outcomes beyond their own course. <coughs> and the Valencia student chapter, uh, while we're talking about engineering, the Florida Engineering Society received the most active student chapter award in the state for the fifth consecutive year. And a uh, part-time professor, formerly full-time staff member here, uh, Charles Davis uh, and Frank Rodriguez, and many others are involved in that. Our engineering is a little under the radar lately because of other things that we're working on. It's really quite good. The um, next item of business is public comment. We have a very tight agenda in terms of being outside and, and viewing the, uh, the work that's going on here. Um, the, we have a number of items uh, that were submitted for public comment. These items are not related to our business, but I'm going to entertain them. But I'm going to ask that the individuals that want to speak keep their discussions to two minutes apiece because of our time schedule. Uh, so with that in mind, um, I would, I would uh, call on uh, uh, Senator Linda Stewart, State Senator Linda Stewart first for two minutes. So these are all with regard uh, to an uh, interest uh, among some in organizing uh, a labor union around our part-time faculty. And that item is not on your agenda and the law doesn't require you to take public comment on anything that you're not 
scheduled to vote on, but we treat you know folks with courtesy. So. Well, I think you have to hear from a state senator, regardless. So, <laughs> um, so um, I want to. Uh, I'm here in support of a quick and speedy vote for uh, the faculty. I'd like, because of your tight schedule, I'd like everyone here who is supportive of a quick and speedy vote for uh, the union to raise your hand. So we've got a number of people here because we're not all going to be able to speak. That's for sure. But um, I just know that. I'm a big supporter of Valencia, and when I'm in Tallahassee, we work very hard with um, with your uh, lobbyists and those that come in, and we try really hard to fund you to an appropriate level, and your college is doing so well. I just want to let you know that we appreciate everything that you have done, um, uh, and I just hope that as much as I appreciate everything, I, I'm here to say one of the things that uh, make us uh, civil as a American is to allow us the right to vote and also to allow us to um, enter into uh, a situation where those in the faculty who would like to be in the union may do so but not re be required to do so. So I know that it's y'all make these difficult decisions all the time but um, I know that uh, this is something that they have worked really hard on and would really like to see an uh, immediate, uh, as soon as possible vote so they could um, get see if there's a, enough interest out there to be able to form um, a union. My name is Teresa Green. I teach psychology courses at Valencia College East Campus, which I have done since 2006, since returning to Central Florida. I have a master's degree in general experimental psychology and have taught psychology courses in both two-year and four-year colleges from Virginia to Florida to North Carolina to Hawaii. While I supported my husband, morally, in uh, his career in the United States Marine Corps. I also have experience working in mental health as well as in sales and marketing. Although I have been teaching psychology for years, I still love my subject and the students, as well as Valencia College. And that is what most of our adjuncts say, that we love teaching at Valencia, but they feel demoralized by the poor compensation and lack of benefits. The response from administration is that teaching as an adjunct is a part-time job. But I ask you, what other professional would cut his or her per hour compensation in such a manner? An accountant? Plumber? Lawyer? No, only teachers are asked to take less than their worth. In truth, it is not part-time when one regularly teaches as many as I, as many of my colleagues do, four classes per semester when five is full-time. We also attend meetings, serve on committees, attend mandatory training and development courses, sponsor clubs, and engage with students. In case you are not aware, approximately 65% of the faculty are part-time or contingent employees, contract workers with no contracts or benefits. Over the past 40 years, this corporate model has infiltrated higher education while administrative positions and salaries have ballooned. It is because we love Valencia College and we want to see it continue to be a leader in the community that we are here. People like my colleague Dale Truscott, who is, will come up, and are deeply concerned that the college is losing young talent. Valencia won the Aspen Prize in 2011. Valencia also recently received a considerable monetary award from the state for its success. The exploitation of adjunct professors is a stain on the reputation of Valencia College. It is obvious from our numbers that adjuncts are essential to the primary mission of the college, that of student learning. Let us realize that adjunct working conditions are student learning conditions. Please give us our vote. I'm here from the, you know, the long drive from Seminole County uh, to support um, individuals that I supported on kind of the other end. Last year I taught at Oviedo High School. I taught liberal arts math two, it's algebra two standard. Those are a lot of kids that look to institutions like Valencia College to continue their education. The truth is this, I am a graduate from a community college, uh, not from Florida, I'm originally from New Mexico. Um, and I had the great privilege of learning from professors, uh, both full and part time. Um, and it never occurred to me 
that they might not be able to put food on their table, that they didn't have health care, that they didn't have everything that they needed to be successful, because they sure as heck made sure I had everything I needed to be successful. You guys are talking a lot today about how you message and how you do things correct and how you build your students up. And the truth is, no amount of the right buildings, no amount of the right light, no amount of the right air ducts that don't make weird noises and make me think there's an alien in this building, no amount of that overcomes that one-on-one -on -one interaction that I have with that teacher. And if they're sacrificing their time to make enough money outside, or they're sacrificing their time um, so they can't go see a doctor, which I've had teachers do, then we're not doing right by them. So I'm here today from Seminole County as an educator, as somebody who's benefited from a community college experience, as somebody that took 10 years to finish a degree in mathematics, took me a little bit to figure out what I wanted to do, that every step of the way, it wasn't the classrooms I sat in, it wasn't how well the college campus looked, it wasn't how much the president got paid for that college, it wasn't how much we paid a football coach or a, or a basketball coach, it was that teacher that gave a shit about me. And that's what I'm standing here today. For all those teachers that fought for me as an 18-year-old, a 25-year-old, a 30-year-old going to college, please, please, please allow these faculty the right to unionize, um, we really appreciate you giving them that chance to vote. I represent a unique position because I actually cut my teeth on Valencia. I taught at Valencia at the three campuses from 2006 to 2014. Um, so I'm here to, to uh, give support to the Valencia staff. <coughs> Excuse me, <coughs> sorry. Um, I also am, of course, working at this point at um, Seminole State as an adjunct. Um, I just really appreciate every, um, all of the courses that I was able to complete at Valencia and also at, um, at Seminole State. But the one thing that I had an issue with is the untenable uh, position of not knowing how much I was going to get paid. So I think that as a former a treasurer of a, of a union in New York State, that is very important that we get the opportunity to vote for better wages and for more support from the faculty and staff. Thank you. I'm Dale Truscott. As he said, I've, uh, I have with me my very nice 10-year plaque that, uh, that my dean gave me a couple weeks ago. I'm proud of that. I'm glad to have it. Didn't come with any merit pay increase, didn't come with anything extra, but I'm glad to have it nevertheless because I love teaching here. Uh, Dr. Sugar, I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned Rachel Allen. I had the privilege of doing a professional development course from her a couple years ago. It was, it was fantastic, and I hope you all know that in return for 20 hours of professional development, we adjunct $100 more per course so that raises my annual income from 20,000 to 21 to. Uh, uh, I'm also glad that you mentioned uh, the relationship with Disney. Um, keep in mind that Disney has just formed a union and succeeded with a contract that, that guarantees a $15 minimum platform for income. We're happy about that. We hope someday some kind of a equitable arrangement can be made for us as well. I. Um, I love my students. I've got students that follow me around from course to course. I call them my groupies. Uh, I constantly say to my students, don't withdraw. Call me first. I will take as much time as it takes to get you through the trouble spots. Uh, I just love doing it. You know, I did ministry for 40 years. I know how to care for people. I, I was the senior pastor, which in secular terminology is the CEO for the largest Lutheran church in the state of Ohio, and I now am serving as a, a kind of a retired aide to the Lutherans and even to the Episcopalians in some of some volunteer capacities here. So I'm familiar with what it takes to, to run businesses and to keep the bottom line correct. Uh, the point is, the point that everyone has been making. We're the heart and soul of your staff. We are the ones that are in close contact with the students. We are the ones that volunteer our time. And in, with all due respect to full-time faculty, which I've got some good friends, uh, 
we do it because we love it. There's no other good reason to do it except that we love it. I love to be with 19 year olds. They keep me from becoming a crotchety old man. Uh, and I want to keep doing that, but I need to have compensation and a wage and, and fairness. And so I hope you'll let us proceed to the vote, which the state has approved, and, uh, and move on so that we can make an equitable agreement with you and so that the money you're spending on lawyers can come to your own people yes. ins instead of being sent out to do whatever you're doing. <laughs> I thank you for listening. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you for all the public comments that we have here. Thank you all for coming. Um, and we need now to move on to the business of the day. Uh, come closer, guys. Each other like this. Wait, wait, wait. We have Teresa coming. Yeah, we got Teresa coming. Hold with one and give left fish with the other. <laughs> <laughs>